We're coming to you live from the Chevy Center just across from the start finish line here in Daytona. And Jeff Gordon, who's better, I said 31 of the 40 years of Hendrick Motorsports. You've been there. Uh, it's hard to believe, right? Yes. Um, but yeah, it, it has been a long time. It's been uh, that long. <laughs> and you've kind of taken, or are you, the range taken on some control here after leaving us as the broadcast. How, have, how is Rick Hendrick, how have they maintained that high standard, that level of success? Yeah, I mean, I think what has made Rick successful in the, the car business business is the same thing that's made him successful in, in the motorsports business. It's all about the people and you know he's surrounded the whole organization with great people that you know from from top to bottom and just the people that build the race cars, the people that drive the race cars, the people that work behind the scenes from marketing and, and, and PR and, and every area in the engine shop. It kind of started with horsepower. Rick has always been <laughs> about speed and horsepower and love cars and uh, here we are 40 years. By the way, tomorrow to the day 40 years from their very first race. Very wow. first race. So wow. I'm not that disappointed. We're racing tomorrow <laughs> as, as long as we go to Victory Lane. Oh, okay. It's so, been a while, though, for you guys. Uh, yeah, about yeah. 10 years. So w one of the things that I always thought was pretty interesting when I drove for SHR and we had the alliance with, with you guys, it always felt to me like you were the leader of, of Hendrick Motorsports. Whether when, we, when there was a problem, you were in there. And I, and I tell people all the time, I, I, you know, I look at when the, Jimmy Johnson had trouble those last few years at Hendrick, I always said it was because Jeff Gordon wasn't there. And because I felt you were the leader when something was wrong, you went in there and you had the right way to do it. Is that what you think has brought Hendrick Motorsports, helped Hendrick Motorsports once you came out of the booth and went back over there full time? to really help lead it because I always felt like you were a, you were a great leader. Well, I appreciate that. And, and I wish I could take that credit, but you know, it, it takes a team of people. It takes a lot of people, you know, to pull it off. I, I would say that what I was really good at as a driver was getting the communication going, getting people talking, getting in the room and just, you know, gathering more information and, and just opening up the dialogue. And so, you know, I still feel like that's an important role to, to the organization and, and, and a part of my role. But I'll be honest, I'm way more involved on the business side of things than probably the competition side. I feel like Rick has always provided the resources for those people that he's put in place to go do their job and do it well. And that's, that's what I want to try to, you know, continue to compliment. Jeff, it wasn't that long ago that team owners weren't letting their cup drivers go race in other types of racing. And you've, you've got Larson going to run the Indy 500 this year. Um, all your drivers, Byron, Chase Elliott, all those guys are racing uh, different cars, late models and whatnot. Why do you allow them to do that? And do you think that's an advantage? Well, you know, as a driver, it was never something I really was interested in. Once I came to the Cup Series, I did a little bit of, of other racing here and there, maybe prior to Cup and a little bit in Cup. But for me, the most part was just staying laser focused on Cup. That was just what worked for me. I'm all about whatever works for any of our guys. Right. And Kyle Larson's made it very, you know, uh, clear. I do my best when I'm driving other cars. I feel like it makes me sharper, makes me better. And I think when he came in and started doing that, it opened up doors for other guys to want to do that. Chase likes to get in a late model. So does you know, yeah. William Byron. I think you know, with Alex, you know, he had not done a lot of sprint car racing, but did a lot of dirt racing. He wanted to get in the sprint yeah. car. So, I mean, we've had some setbacks, but our, our policy hasn't changed. We still want these guys to live their life, to go out and do things that make them better on Sunday, whatever that may be. I think we just got to have Tone with, it down a little within, bit. Reason, <laughs> yeah, within reason. Right. But I think he's the one that broke that mold for, for the industry, yeah. really. You you got that back on track. We saw that with Tony Stewart. Yeah. It kind of went away, and you brought that back with you and Hendrick Motorsports and your drivers. Take me to tomorrow's race, the Daytona 500, the great American race. You've won this race. You know how to get it done. Been a while. Take me to the plan. You guys have always come down here, had bad, fast race cars, set on the pole, struggled a little bit with the handling yeah. and, and getting the job done at the end. Is this part of the plan? I see a lot of speed in your cars. I finally see the handling on a long run with the Hendrick Camp. I think, I mean, the guys have been really complimentary of the cars, feel like they drive really good, got a lot of speed, and they and they had speed in qualifying as well. Had a little setback with the 48 before, you know, they were able to, to, to get through, um, you know, out, out there on the track to go qualify. But ever since then, in the race on, on Thursday, man, they feel great. So I'm really optimistic and excited that, that we have four great race cars and, and drivers and teams go get this done. But, man, there's a lot of strategy in this race. It's The game has changed tremendously. Yes, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, we got two current guys up there in the booth to call this thing because 
what it takes with this car, with you know, whether you're saving fuel or whether you're wide open, what's happening on pit road, man, it takes a lot to get it done today. Yeah, about the booth, uh, what advice would you have for him working with him <laughs> since you did that? And then Don't he, ask him he, that. Ran, he ran you into the business world. That's how tough it was. Yikes, man. All I got to say is hold on tight because you've only been up there for like maybe, I don't know, 45 yeah. minutes or an hour or whatever, however long you've been up there with him so far. Just wait to try to tr keep up with this guy for an entire 500 miles. Uh, you got your work cut out for you. It's like you. watching a dog chase his tail. <laughs> uh, Jeff, great seeing you. Hey, good Thank luck you. Uh, tomorrow to you and your guys. I really I appreciate, appreciate Jeff Gordon being with us. Head hey, race fans. Thanks for watching our video. For all NASCAR on Fox News content and the best clips from Fox Sports, be sure to follow and subscribe to our channel.